Let's make this player collage sports poster in Photoshop. Let's start by making a new layer and going to our pen tool. You can hit P is a shortcut on your keyboard. Now, every time we click, it's gonna connect a line from point A to point B. So we can start on the left side, go to the right side. Maybe we go over here, up and over, and then I'm just kind of clicking around to kind of create these triangle shapes. And if you want to maneuver these points around after the fact, you can hit A for the direct selection tool and then click and drag these individual points. We want this one lining up so it intersects perfectly with that one over there. And this one maybe we bring down, make it look a little more triangular, something like this feels like a good starting point. From here, we're gonna use the sections we created to house different elements within the design. So we're gonna have a bunch of photos we're dragging in. Let's get started. We've got this Jack Williams photo from a low angle, pretty cool shot by Evan Bernstein. These are all Evan Bernstein photos, by the way, super talented photographer. And this one I'm gonna set up in the top left shape. So to mask it to our shape background, all we're gonna do is create a folder and drop a mask on that specific folder. So we'll go to our folder icon and then hold command and click on our shape thumbnail. And then let's just click our mask icon. So now anything we put in this folder is going to be masked to these shapes. So when we drop our Jack Williams image, our first one, you can see he is being masked to the shapes. And then for our next image, we're going to drag in this other Jack Williams photo of him throwing a flick and this one we're going to put in this bottom section again because it's in this folder it's still getting clipped to this mask and we can see we weren't exactly perfect with lining up this initial shape so that's okay i'm going to turn these off and i'll hit a to readjust this point and that looks better so now we'll, we're going to remask this folder delete the current one hold command, click on our shapes, and then set a new mask. So now we have that corner fixed. Now I'm also gonna drop a photo in the background. Let's bring in this shot from Media Day. And I just wanted to show like the last name and number. And now for this bottom portion, we want this to be plain white because we're gonna have a cutout over the top kind of standing in front of this background. To do that, let's make a new layer and we can just quickly draw it with the pen tool since this seems to be a pen tool video, just clicking around this area. Right now it's set to black, we'll go and eyedropper white. So now for the final piece of this layout, we'll drag in the Jack Williams cutout and we'll drag it in front of everything. I think it's fun to change things up and do a photo like this. Clearly this was taken like before a game, kind of a walk up shot. It, it makes it a little bit more interesting as opposed to just always doing a shot of the player in game action. And we can give our cutout some foot shadows. We'll just go pretty basic with it. So if you go to your brush tool, select your black brush and we'll flatten down this brush size, drop the flow down a good bit, and then we'll just start painting on near the shoes. And we can keep this pretty simple. It's maybe not gonna be the most realistic because there might be some shadow in between the shoes in a real world setting, but I kind of like the clean look of just kind of the single foot shadows on each shoe. So this is kind of the overall layout we're going with. Now we're gonna individually do camera raw filter for each of these photos and kind of sharpen them up, make them pop some more. So we can start with our back cutout. Let's go to filter, camera raw filter, and we'll start by bringing up the exposure a bit and up the contrast, lower the highlights. This back photo, I think I like the original version I did with this as we bump the texture and clarity. I set this to black and white image in the background, just kind of making it stay out of the way and feel more like a background image, more so than, than a featured one. But something like that feels about right for the initial filter. And then we can slap on a gradient map. If you go to your adjustment layers and it's automatically set to black to white, but we can reselect that in your basics. I feel like that looks pretty good. We can go with a, a more contrasty look if we wanted to bring these two sliders closer together. That's always an option. We can move on to our other photos, bring them into camera raw filter. I might just start by dragging on these same exact settings. If you hold option, you can just click and drag these smart filters up to any other smart object. It's gonna copy the same camera raw filter settings. And I feel like that looks pretty good. Maybe with this top one, I wanna desaturate his skin tones a little bit just to make it more consistent with the rest of the graphics. So if you go to color mixer, the oranges are what we wanna target here. Maybe boosting the luminance a little more as well. And now for the player cutout, we'll take those same camera raw filter settings, 
copy them over again, holding option and clicking and dragging. And we can go in and for this one, you can probably bring the skin tones back to normal. I do like the shadows being boosted because we get a lot more detail in the pants, which is cool. And then bring the highlights down again with the shirt detail. The other thing I wanna add with this background is some lines that are physically dividing the space rather than just having the photos do the dividing. So let's make a new layer and we're gonna go to our line tool. If you right click on the shape tool, you can get your line tool. And we're gonna choose a color that is pretty pretty vibrant. We're gonna do like this, this light blue green color and we're setting the stroke to that color the fill doesn't matter because this is just a line and now we're gonna drag out a line and we'll make it yeah, four pixels is probably good maybe six pixels and make sure this is behind our player cutout and then you can duplicate this layer with command J and drag it and rotate it so it fits on these other portions of the divided background and I really like the pop of color these lines give to the whole design now we're gonna start playing with the colors a bit so first I want to drop on a hue and saturation adjustment layer and the purpose of this is that I want the sky to be closer matching to this light blue line work that we have and we can drop this hue and saturation into our grouped layer like our shapes and go to your blues let's boost the saturation a bit you can see the effect it's having and then we can tweak this top slider to really get it more of like that sky blue almost a green and it is affecting some of this jersey here but i don't mind because we're kind of getting this light blue wash over the whole design, which I think works. Next, we can play with a selective color adjustment layer. So this one will go down to selective color. I'll drag this over all of our images and we'll just go to the reds and drop the cyans down to kind of bring out and pop those skin tones. But quick before and after, just a little pop of red on those faces. And then I also wanna drop a gradient map over this whole thing. So we'll go to our adjustment layers, gradient map. Gradient maps have all these presets you can choose from. If you ever just wanna add some general color to the design, I kinda like this pink to green gradient map I found earlier. And I'm gonna reverse it actually and set this blend mode to color and if we drop the opacity down to around 30%. You might prefer without the gradient map, that's okay. You might prefer a different combination of colors. So now we're gonna continue with these finishing effects. Let's make a new layer and command option shift E to apply the whole image to its own layer. We'll go up to filter, convert for smart filters, and then go up to filter, camera raw filter. These are gonna be some master adjustments we're gonna do to the whole thing. Ooh, I like bringing down the highlights. We're getting more detail. And upping the shadows is also pretty fun. And then we can play with the texture and clarity. Something subtle, and then of course a little vignetting. Next, we're gonna do a fun thing where I'm gonna duplicate this final image layer, and then let's go up to filter, distort, and wave. Now this wave can get really funky looking, but we're gonna switch it to a square wave and kind of play with a, a more minimal version of this effect. And we'll just be kind of subtle with how we're breaking up this image, but let's try it. Now we're gonna take this whole image and just drag it over to the left. And we'll kind of get this like subtle repeating image effect that I think works well just because of this whole collage style. I'm going to chop off just this left column of collage. So let's go to our rectangular marquee tool. Shortcut is M. I'm just drawing out a box like that. And then we'll hit our mask icon. Next, we're gonna add in a few textures over the top. So let's drag in this light texture I got from unsplash.com. Also add a hue and saturation layer to it, but if we set the blend mode to screen, you can see we're getting this similar like light blue green coloring and it can drop the opacity down a little bit. And if we wanna like fine tune exactly where this light is showing up, we can add a mask to it. And with a black brush, we'll reset our brush size back to normal. You can play with a low flow, brush out the parts where we don't want it showing as much. So really that's like mostly the player faces you want to stand out in these settings. And then the last thing we'll throw on is a dust and scratches image. And I forget where I got this, but it was a long time ago and I've just had it. It's just black with a bunch of white specks on it. And again, if we set this blend mode to screen, we just get a little bit of of that, that small detail, kind of giving it a more imperfect, slightly grungy look. And I feel like the skin tones aren't exactly where I want them still, so let's add on a final selective color layer. Again, bring that cyan value down. And if you wanna keep playing with color, you know, you can always add 
an endless amount of these layers. You can add a color lookup. You can go into something like three strip. I know that does a good job popping those skin tones. Don't love it for this situation, but maybe something that matches the, the washed out look a bit more. One last thing before we close up shop, we're gonna make this disc actually go over the top of this duplicated image. So to do that, let's take this image, group it into its own folder, and then we'll put a mask on it clicking our mask icon, and then with a black brush, let's brush away the parts that are covering Jack Williams' hand and disc. And for whatever reason, I just realized that I wanted to clean up this second triangle. You can see like we have the overlapping photos here. Let's get rid of this top part of the bottom photo. So to do that, I know we have all these adjustment layers on top. I'm just gonna hide them all for now. We'll go back in to this lower grouping, and this is our second photo. If you just drop a mask on it, and then I'm just gonna take my black brush and get rid of this overlapping part. This is gonna give it a, a much cleaner feel in this second triangle. So now we can add back on our finishing effects, starting with, again, Command Option Shift E to stamp the image onto its own layer, bring those smart filters over onto this new one, and then we can reactivate these additional layers as well. There's our final poster design. I know it doesn't have text or logos on it. I kind of wanted the, the Jack Williams back of Jersey to do a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of identifying the player. But of course you can add text and logos to your own design. There's definitely some room in the corner. I think that would look great. Or maybe if you move the cutout up, spaced out along the bottom. Always a lot of options with text and logos so I'm gonna leave that part up to you. As always, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.